Hi, hello, how are you? Welcome to my channel. This is Aaliyah the Gardeners. Peace and blessings on everyone here, and please wish the same for me. If you have stumbled across this channel, then please be prepared to see some art and creative stuff along with me showing my appreciation for nature. Video I will show you how I took this and turned it into this. If this is maybe your first time being introduced to oil paints, let me share with you some of the basic things that you'll need to get started. Basics. You need a canvas. You need some gesso, white or black. My first time painting with black gesso, liquid or some medium that can help with drying. Then also a solvent based type of uh, mineral spirits. Or if you want to go a more natural route to thin your oil paint, you can also use something like linseed oil. So let's show you how I set everything up. I am setting up in my parents' dining room. I covered the floor and the table with a tarp. And so here you just see me going through a lot of my old supplies from undergrad. Share a little bit with you about how I got my reference photo. So I was asked by the lovely people at Curate in downtown Valdosta to paint a painting of azaleas that would be put in a restaurant that will be next door to it. So my painting would be alongside about 14 other artists. Everybody would be painting different um, interpretations of what azaleas look like to them. I had like one really crappy cell phone pic, but I didn't like it. So I went to Pexels.com. So on Pexels, you can find a lot of royalty free um, video and photographs that people can use for like their websites and things like that. So you don't have to worry about any kind of copyright infringement. So first you would need to set up an account. You log in, you type what you are looking for in your search prompter, and then just start, you know, looking for material that might work for whatever project that you're working on. And it's boom, it's as easy as that. And so I used a reference photo from this website. I haven't been doing art for the past 10 years, but I am going to dive back into the art realm full force and try to make a really intentional stab at making art a career for myself. Yes, I do have a BFA in fine arts. Concentration at that time was painting. Painting with watercolor and painting with oils as well. Hopefully, I can really share some really helpful tips for you guys. This next process was kind of fun. I just went one by one, went through all my oil paints, opened them up. Um, if they gave me a little trouble opening up right away, then I would just have to use a little elbow grease, use a, a wrench or something like that to just help me pry that thing open. Working with oil paints has brought up concerns for me in the past, and if I continue to work with them, which I haven't decided, but if I do continue to make more projects after this with oil paint, I will want to dive into some research um, to know if there are some non-toxic brands of oil paint or just, you know, non-toxic mediums that work with oil paint because that has been a concern in the past that the ingredients of some oil paint have been recalled for heavy metal toxicity and things of that nature. But in this project, I just want it to be as safe as I could use my gloves and also have like proper ventilation and trying to see what still works. So spoiler alert, my oil paints are great. Like the majority of them, yeah, like I'm pretty much 99.9% .9 except for the one that I use the whole tube. Yeah, that, that was done. But yeah, all my paints are great. They all work. I was super, super surprised and elated. Oh yeah, I like to put face masks on sometimes to help my skin do a little self-care, unclog my pores, and be productive at the same time. The oil paints are still in good use. Uh, there's no signs of drying out. So we're going to just walk through my process. And, and I do prefer to always 
paint with one black and white reference photo and one full color reference photo. This just helps me to set up my initial sketch. And then when I say sketch, I mean I'm sketching with paint. And this first phase of painting is lay in some highlights and low lights, get some lights and shadows and just basic shapes of it's kind of like rough sketching with oil paint. It can be a super helpful tool to not have a color photo or use both. You can still have your color photo, but then still refer to your black and white photo from time to time. Say, for example, you want to veer from the original color palette of your reference photo and you don't want to be restricted with just using the exact colors that you see, then having a black and white reference photo can help you still maintain depth and contrast. So at this point, I am trying to test out the alizarin crimson that I have and I'm trying to see how vibrant I can get my paint color with this uh, color red because I'm really trying to go for something super vibrant um, hot pink if I if, if I can achieve that color then that would be great so uh, if I cannot achieve a nice hot pink that I'm seeing in the photo then I'm gonna have to definitely go and try to find some more paint at the store oh mind you at this time Storm Idalia was coming to the area where I lived. So the Hurricane Idalia was definitely coming. And actually the next day there was a power outage. So that forced me to work outside. That night, the, this same evening, I realized that I didn't have the paint color that I was looking for. So I, I stopped and I went to Walmart late at night and I found a really really cheap oil paint set that had fluorescent paint in it also you'll notice that I was mixing up some blue I was testing out the blue and that was a cobalt blue and that was not the color blue that I was looking for I was trying to mix the the white the red and the blue together to achieve a shade of purple and it wasn't the shade of purple I liked it was a little muddy little too warm for me I really like a cool electric kind of looking blue so also I realized I needed to get some different blue shades in my in my paint set that I was working with so this cheap paint set that I found at Walmart it had a fluorescent pink and it had ultramarine blue which those are closer to what I was looking for to help me achieve these kind of vibrant cool uh, pinks and purple so shout out to Walmart this is not sponsored by the way but yeah thank you guys y'all came in just when I needed y'all so just enjoy this time lapse as you watch me lay in these light pinks So one really helpful tip that I learned during this process was that there is a difference between your ultramarine blue and your cobalt blue. So if you lay cobalt blue and ultramarine blue next to each other on a white piece of paper, they look really, really similar. It's not until you start adding in your primary colors or, or any other cool and warm shades to just see the differences between those blues. So I learned that the cobalt is going to be a lot warmer. It gives you a really nice warm crayon box green color. And then your ultramarine is going to lend itself towards more of those cool shades and it gives you nice vibrant crayon box like purples.
So not only was I not able to achieve the vibrancy in the pink, like a, I was really trying to achieve a nice hot pink or magenta that I was seeing in the photograph, um, but also I was running out. <laughs> I was running out of what I had. So yeah, that, that definitely required me to go have an emergency late night art supply run. I was just showing you the colors that I've mixed so far and how they look. And as you can see, the pinks are not exactly matching. They're more like warm, like in the salmon family. Not so much a hot pink, right? Let me know if you agree with me down in the comment section. It's just nice to lay everything out, see what you have to work with, and then make changes as needed. Forgot to mention that I actually use grid lines to help me maintain proportions of my rough sketch that I do with either pencil or charcoal or whatever I have on hand. So that was intentional. If you saw lines, I have grid lines first on my canvas and then I add grid lines to my reference photo and then I sketch from there and I line everything up to be proportional. This is something that I used to do in all my projects back in undergrad. It helped save me time because free drawing was something that gave me anxiety. Like just drawing freely without the lines, I needed the restrictions. Otherwise, it's like I wouldn't get anything done. So it's just always been something I use. I don't find it a crutch for what I do because I like a realistic look. And the final look of my paintings, kind of a realistic slash impressionistic look. <laughs> so yes, we have some impressionism going on when you see my paint strokes and the texture involved. But overall, we still have a beautiful balanced composition and I didn't have to stress over it. My painting process, for some reason, it reminds me of like painting by numbers, but just fancier. If you remember what that is, let me know down in the comments. No shade whatsoever. I mean, I think a lot of the things that we were exposed to as kids were actually really, really great tools and gave us some great like material to work with for like practicing just the the basic fundamentals of of creating a composition you know what i mean a lot of the things we work with like coloring books painting by numbers all of that kind of stuff is really really helpful in the beginning if you're a beginning artist so that might be a great starting place for anyone who's scared a little anxious to even begin learning a new a new skill try coloring books if that inspires you to just play in with color and seeing how laying certain colors next to other colors creates depth and light and shadow just go for it guys don't be scared So I'm looking at everything, my work so far, totally not happy with it. And after this, we're gonna go find some new paint. So yeah, these palettes, we're gonna just not use that for now, <laughs> as you can see. And we're gonna test out this uh, ultramarine blue, see if I can get a better, a brighter purple with that, and also this fluorescent pink. I'm so excited. There was also kind of a, um, a reddish purple that I ended up using as well that was in that same kit. And so that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how I have to work outside due to the power outers that we have. And that actually turned out to be amazing because I was able to really see what I was doing, see how the colors looked, and achieve some, some really great results 
with some new color combinations that I was able to mix up. So until next time, guys, please subscribe if you would like to see more from me. I'm definitely going to be posting part two of this video, so stay tuned. And thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.